Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we have a review of chapter 941, The Bisu Town's Most Beloved. So I know I said last week that Yasu was almost certainly going to end with quite a tragic fate, but I certainly wasn't expecting it to happen anywhere near this quickly. Caught me quite off guard actually, because of how swiftly things are progressing. Like the last chapter, it felt like it was planting the seeds for Yasu, whereas this week it seems the entire tree has just already grown. We haven't had that period of growth where we just leave a character to do their own thing for a while, culminating in a fantastic payoff when the inevitable does occur. And as a result, I can't actually say that I feel too much for the character because we haven't had that time. The only thing in this chapter that does give me some sort of emotional response is the last panel of the chapter with Toko, who we established last week was Yasu's daughter, running and crying with her trademark smile. That is incredibly heartbreaking to me because we've shared a lot of experiences with Toko, like the Soba store and the whole Orochi thing. So seeing her at the end here with tears in her eyes over this, when she seemed so strong about everything else is quite shattering and a wonderful panel. I think the thing that really does get to me about this chapter though, is that it barely progresses Yasu's character. Yes, we discover some information such as him being a daimyo of the Kozuki family, and we even get his epithet Yasu through the hedgehog, as well as his true hairstyle, but that's it. I don't really know why I'm supposed to care so much about this situation, which is problematic because it's the focal point of the chapter. And furthermore, it's a real kick of the teeth with the tease at the very end, where Yasu says that he must apologize to everyone for two reasons, as well as tell Orochi one thing. I feel like that information is what we needed to make this chapter. Because apart from the fact that likable old Yasu got captured, surprisingly little else of dramatic importance really happens this week. You know, there's some lamenting about Komarasaki, a character who is alive, so there's no dramatic impact there, and there's also very little progress in the prisoner mine. Although there is a nice piece of comedy involving Luffy and Hyogoro having eaten all of the Oshiroko, which is actually a supremely relevant event, because it implies that Big Mom will almost certainly go into a hunger tantrum upon arrival, as well as Queen actually. So there's some more setup, as well as a narrative reason why Queen had to put a break into the Sumo Inferno. And then there's also a part about Kinemon starting fires, the arsonist he is, in a cunning plan to get Ashura Doji into action, which is yet again, more setup. It's an action that's difficult to get invested in because I'm not hugely invested in Ashura Doji himself. I mean, I know he's strong and all, but I don't know what Kinemon knows. And so I don't take a lot away from him consistently saying that he's integral to everything. And everything else is based in Yasu's story. So it's a chapter that is building towards three separate payoffs, which is great because you know that's manga, but there's not a lot of satisfaction to be gained from reading this particular chapter weekly. The dramatic revelation that kind of justifies a chapter is Yasu's prior role in Wano, but it's not quite enough oomph, which is why when we got to the end and he was about to say his three things, I was just like, oh my God, please just say at least one or two of them and give this chapter a really solid ending. But that was the last page and uh, what can you do? In fact, you know what? It might actually have been a decent idea to save the reveal of Toka being Yasu's daughter until this chapter rather than last week. Because then 941 could have ended on a pretty big, oh shit, they're related and he's about to be executed moment. But yeah, I don't know. This week just didn't have enough to quite grip me the way most chapters do. It's an awful lot of perpetual setup, which does not make the chapter bad by any means. If anything, it just makes me hungry for more and more, which is extraordinarily unfortunate because One Piece will be on break for golden week next week, so yeah. Another small thing that came out this week was Hiyori, very much implying that she was Komarasaki with the line about how back in the capital, people would have died to lay with her. And I think that that puts a satisfactory end to the theory that Hiyori is a younger version of Komarasaki through, you know, some sort of time travel shenaniganry. And look, this idea was always going to be a long shot, but I think it was more of me getting desperate to find a reason why such a strong and intelligent female character suddenly turned into yet another useless female character. Although I don't know why I'm surprised because this always happens. Like pudding, a strong villain who falls in love and becomes a useless mess, or Viola, an initially strong antagonist who transitions into a role of doing absolutely nothing, except standing there looking pretty and reporting the news. Or Rebecca, a gladiator whose entire arc is about her father making sure that she does nothing at all. Or Boa Hancock, the only female warlord of the sea being reduced to a Luffy fangirl. And of course, the less said about Nami and Robin in the New World Era, the better. So you know what, let's just go ahead and add Hiyori to the pile. But that's about it for this week. The only other thing I'd like to mention is the pretty amazing color spread that came with the chapter. I love Love the idea of all of the Straw Hats hitchhiking with signs to their particular desired locations, like Panty Heaven or Cotton Candy Kingdom. It's very well put together, and I love the poses of pretty much everyone, with a particular shout out going to Luffy, whose perspective looks just fantastic, and the use of Gear Third is really cool, as well as Nami sporting the incredibly goofy smile and sunglasses. It's a nice combination, and this spread will most certainly be my desktop background for a while to come. Sadly, my excitement for the color spread isn't quite reflected in the chapter itself, but as I said last week, I suspect that the mid arc blues are setting in for me anyway. And I understand that this stuff is what we need because you can't have drama without setup. And I'm not one of those people who just want action, action, action all the time, but this chapter just didn't do a lot for me. I appreciate it, but I wish it was able to hit me in the gut a bit more with that final page, which I think could have been accomplished and just wasn't. Regardless, I am very much looking forward to the next chapter in uh, two weeks time. 
But that pretty much does it for chapter 941. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the chapter. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.